Hey, everybody, and welcome back to No Earthly Explanation. This is the podcast where we dive into the things that are just unexplainable. In case you're new to listening, I'm your scientific host, Ellie Ringo of Ellie Knows Rocks. And with me, as always, is our investigative host, Don Schmidt. How are you doing tonight, Don? I'm just great, Ellie. Good to always be with you. Thank you. <laughs> so what have you been up to? You've been out to Roswell lately? Well, actually, uh, yes. Um, I did a, a number of additional lectures there, and uh, we're working on a major new display oh. that uh, we're hoping to unveil next year. And, and uh, the whole idea is that we will take people back, not only to 1947, when the uh, most famous of all UFO cases took place, but we will take you there. We were awesome. We will take you to the very crash site <laughs> and if we pull this off uh it will be a major major attraction i would say globally so it's hard though finding the best people the, the the best professional people that can carry it out the way i want it done with the effects very true and uh, and, and so i'm still i'm shopping even in other countries right now but That's smart. Uh, i don't quit <laughs> that's a lot of technical things and everything that you have to make sure that, you know, people have a good experience. And I'm really interested. Well, like... Go ahead. And for the investors involved too. Uh, I mean, I'm promising it's going to be state of the art and uh, it's going to be a full scale replica. So that's all that's as much as I will say at this point. <laughs> Got it. Total, total secrecy. Well, I'm and really about interested you? in our guest. Uh, well, me, I just got back from uh, Tonopah, Nevada, looking for turquoise, and I was exhausted, out of service, but I came back with probably 400 pounds of rocks. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, no joke. So I'm a little tired, so I'm glad to just sit for a second. It's fantastic. But I would like to welcome our guest uh, that we have waiting for us. Uh, this oh, evening, gosh. we're speaking with Erica Alberry, and you guys may have seen her on the Netflix special Surviving Death. And she mm -hmm. has an amazing, amazing story that I can't wait to hear. So should we welcome her in? Absolutely. Looking forward to it myself. Awesome. Hi, Erica. Are you there, Erica? Hi, how are Thank you? <laughs> how are you this Thanks evening? Thanks for being with us. Um, I'm doing well. Um, just got off work and all that. So, but I'm excited to do this uh, podcast. Oh, fantastic. We're so happy to have you here. Your story is really amazing. Could you, could you start us off with a little synopsis of why you're here and why you were on the show on Netflix, Surviving Death? Um, it is quite a story. Um, getting onto Netflix was never uh, something I ever imagined would even happen. Mm -hmm. um, it just started with my son randomly one day talking about a mother he used to have and a family he used to have. And, um, you know, he was talking about um, a mom and dying. And it, it, I don't know if you went the whole. The oh, whole yeah. Thing. Whatever you would like to share. This is amazing. He, so he, um, one day when he was four, we were just in the car and he was just talking about how he really missed his old mom and how they used to go to the park. And <clears throat> I was trying to think of, well, you mean like me at the park? I'm trying to ex ask him, you know, what are you talking about? And he said, no, my mom with the beautiful hair and she had brown skin and she just pushed me on the swing. And, and I, I kind of was trying to, ask him like open-ended questions about who like who are you talking about like at this point I didn't know what he's talking about at all and he said well I used to have brown skin and my name was Jalen and um I died a long time ago and then he told me his mom's last name was Washington my dad's last name was Robinson you know he just started going on in the car on the way home from dinner and um so, that had to be absolutely just mind bending. Yeah. I mean, not only is he not talking about you as his mother, but he's talking about being another person, another little boy. 
Right. It, I mean, it came out of nowhere. I'm trying to ask him, is this somebody at your school? Like I was, I'm a skeptical person. So I had to get to the bottom of what he is talking about because like, I'm trying to figure out who at his school is this name or if he knows somebody, he heard the story. I'm like, right. and I'm a preschool teacher myself. So I was mm -hmm. asking like, open-ended questions, not to like feed in any answers to get yeah correct answers from him you know and so we kind of went home and I could not stop thinking about what he said I I mean I just was just sitting on the couch just like what you know and I mean I got my phone out and I just I googled it like I googled you know Jalen Robinson Washington death I think I just all I entered and I mean I, the news story like mm -hmm. articles and um obituary and all that stuff popped up and I mean I was just when I seen that the mom's name was Washington and dad's name was Robinson I was like oh my gosh like is this it I you know what I mean that that's pretty weird coincidence like had you ever was, heard those names before your son mentioned them no like it was wow. just so random and weird that he just started talking about it in the car oh my gosh so and you're um, in and you're in Indiana and this boy, this family is in Brooklyn, New York. So right. it's not as though your neighbors or acquaintances or have even read anything about uh, because because um, the Washington boy met a very tragic ending, as you'll be uh, you know telling us about shortly. Mm -hmm. But um, this was just completely out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. that your son Atlas starts talking about being someone else. How right. old was your son when he started talking about this? And, and how old was the boy that he was having the memories about? So Jalen was, I think, 19 months old when he was murdered by his babysitter. Okay. And um, my son was four years old when he started talking about it. Your son was how old again? I'm sorry. Four. Four. Okay. And how old is your son now? We're just out of curiosity. He is nine years old now. That, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does he still talk about it? Does he still have any, I guess, visions or dreams or I'm not sure what it was established he was having. Um, I've, I asked him recently. Um, sometimes I try to talk about it. He remembers the story. He remembers filming the Netflix, he knows the documentary, but he does not have any memories of Jalen anymore. He did for really? probably two years, up to six years old. He did talk about it randomly. And then it was, I could tell it was more of like, he just thought he should say something and he was just trying to come up with things to say. And I felt like that's enough. Like, we're not, like, we're not going to, like, he thought he just needed to answer some a question, you know, and I, yeah. he does not remember that life anymore so interesting um, as though he's already he's moved beyond and that where you know one soul connecting with another that or it's the same soul that it's moved as far as on into the new life which happens to be of your son mm -hmm. and that that memory of the previous is now gone right as much as uh you would ask him, he doesn't remember. Mm -hmm. It was just during those couple of years yeah. that it was very stark. In fact, he was having nightmares. He was uh, screaming out during his, his sleep. Yes. That he was feeling the pain, correct? Right. So um, ab after the whole, all of this reincarnation, you know, all of this, I, it made me think, well, when he was a baby, he had night terrors and he had a lot of, uh, you know, since he, I think he didn't sleep the night until he was almost two years old. And oh, wow. he, I know, <laughs> but, and then he still was having these night terrors. I mean, really around two till then four years old, it started being like three to four nights a week. And then they, I mean, it was just random, mm -hmm. but he would start screaming in his room. It was so like, we did this so many times. We, I'd go in there, so his dad would go in there, 
his eyes will be open and he would just be screaming in pain saying sometimes stop it out like he, i'm hurting my legs hurt my legs hurt he was holding his legs but his eyes are open but you can't talk to him like i'm speaking to him and it's like he can't hear me so it's almost like he was like almost like a seizure but not and he was there talk, but somewhere like else in your sleep walking you can walk around but he yep. didn't walk around but he would talk his eyes are open and he would just be bawling and bawling oh. and this could go on for an hour mm -hmm. and i would just have to be like atlas you're at home with mommy like mm -hmm. we're at home calm down nothing's happening to you and i would have to like talk him down to get him back to sleep like just start talking because I thought he was in having a nightmare and he mm -hmm. was like couldn't get out of it or something so I would talk him out and it, we, he even went to like a, a therapist because I was so concerned mm -hmm. I was just going to yeah. ask at what point did you seek medical yeah. uh, consultation because this, this was a reoccurring event yes it was having multiple would it happen once a week once a week twice I mean once Sometimes I mean how often how frequently I mean, it was happening so often. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was causing, you know, me going to work, we're tired, he's tired. I'm trying to figure out why he's, is he in pain? I didn't know if he was having like, leg, his legs were hurt because a lot of times he would say his legs were hurting him. Um, so I thought maybe he had something going on, you know? And um, so I did tell our pediatrician who got him referral to a, a child therapist, but it didn't work out too well um, because Why? they were just giving me um, suggestions of how to calm him down to get to sleep at night. And I was trying to explain, but he didn't have trouble going to sleep. Um, it's the nightmares that he's having. So they and didn't like, well, you can give him a soothing bath. You can do this. I'm like, well, he's having the nightmare. It's the nightmares that it's, that's troubling me. And um, we probably went six or seven times and we stopped oh, going wow. because I felt like it was not going anywhere. And you told them that he was telling you about all of these things and they just brushed it off. Right. They were just saying, trying to, like, they had him playing with Play-Doh saying like, which color means sadness, which color means anger. And he was like, <laughs> what? And, and like, I think they were thinking, I mean, I can understand. They're thinking maybe something was troubling him. Yeah. They're trying to get him to talk about his feelings. Mm -hmm. But I was, it was kind of like, I, we just stopped going because I felt like we weren't getting anywhere with that. So when did you did start to get somewhere? Them... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Don. Oh, quickly. Uh, did any of them at any time question you? Did they suggest that or in any way infer that maybe he was being abused in any cheap no. <laughs> manner or form? Thankfully, no. Fortunate. That's good. That's good. That's great. Right. That's great because so often that could be the case. But but just like quickly, uh, the boy, Jalen Robinson from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. did Atlas ever mention or suggest because he had been beaten and strangled to death by his babysitter, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. did your son ever feel or, or relive or, or, or sense a pain in his throat mm -hmm. or anywhere else where he was struck? This is what is it? If you do read about it, he was also stabbed in the legs with scissors. Like, oh, he was also stabbed. Oh, wow, in the legs with scissors, and so that makes me think oh. of all the leg pain he had when he was younger. Oh, my god, those were the those were the stab uh, wounds in the legs. I, I did, I mean, I read about it that mm -hmm. it said that he was stabbed with scissors in the legs. So I wondered if he was always crying about his legs. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So did was he ever having any kind of like conversations by himself with these other people that he saw? Or was it only happening at night when he slept? Only having, happening when he slept. Mm -hmm. um, he did um, go through a time where he was very fearful. And I don't know. Um, he was scared of shadows. And he was very like anxious and he chewed his nails as a like when he was two he would chew his nails a lot mm -hmm. you know so I was very worried that like why is he so anxious you know and he did get and but these are things I didn't think of until when this happened I think back on his young child baby life toddler life mm -hmm. you know um he did bite his nails he was scared of shadows 
for some reason. And um, so I don't know. So I don't know if those relate to anything, but I just do recall those things. Um, yeah. One interesting thing I um, yes. made me, you know, when I reflect back on his past, he really had a interest in African-American women. Really? Yes. And I thought about it because mm. he was about two or three he had an African-American pre teacher um, and he would just say, I love her. Her hair is beautiful. He would always talk about her hair is so beautiful. I love her. She's pretty. And he said, I, I wish I had brown skin so we could get married. <laughs> and I told oh my him, gosh. I said, well, you don't have to have brown skin to marry someone with brown skin. And he said, <laughs> I just love her. And then we saw a woman at the grocery store, an African-American woman. It's usually with like real like braided hair. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, she is beautiful. So it makes me think maybe it made me think of his mother or something because he would really just be like, wow, she's so beautiful. And at so what beautiful. age was he saying that? This is like two and three years old. Okay. So just really think African American women were beautiful. And I was like, that's so interesting that he says that. And, and that was before he started really talking yeah. about all of his. So past. I remember <laughs> thinking he always I was like maybe it made me thought of his mom or something because yeah. he really always like yeah, I want to marry a girl who's beautiful with brown skin and like, like you know yeah I just thought that was so interesting like, interesting little thought there wow um, that's amazing so after um I went home and researched that I mean mm -hmm. um me and his dad are not together but I mean we are pretty good friends so I mean mm -hmm. I called him immediately and was like what do you think about this I'm sending you some links and he was like, oh my gosh, that is so wild. Like he was thinking that it was bizarre and interesting. So I thought of questions to like ask him like, okay, so you used to be this boy named Jalen, like what happened? Mm -hmm. And see, he at first said, I think my mom may have killed me. I don't know. And you know, oh man, Jalen being 19 months old, mm -hmm. you have to think yeah. of what a 19 month old knows. He said, because I remember I was crying and I was kicking my feet and then I was kicking inside of your stomach. That's what he said, which I'm like, what? Wow. That's so bizarre because there's a time period of Jalen's death and him, Atlas being born. How, like, how long, how far apart were they? I'm trying to think because I, I don't have it on me. I think. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I believe. I believe Jalen died in, uh, I wrote down 2005. Okay, I would say 2006 or five, yeah, around there. And Atlas was born in 2014. So, I mean, there's quite a time right. yeah. lapse there. Mm -hmm. But he mm -hmm. said, and then I was just kicking inside of your stomach. And I'm like, that was so bizarre. And I did let him know, like, I said, well, I mean, I showed him the article of the obituary and he said oh my gosh my baby picture you found my baby picture oh and he recognized it he said that's my baby picture from when i was a baby and right. so i said well right. this says that a babysitter because he said i think my mom did it to me mm -hmm. though and i said it was a babysitter which was the mom's friend and he said oh my gosh i he was relieved to know that his mom didn't do that to him and i okay. always thought like maybe that was the whole purpose of anything of anything is because he was so happy to know that his mom did not hurt him yeah um wow. so i've asked i take it the uh, uh the babysitter was convicted and uh is serving most likely a life term but uh are there any pictures of the babysitter i mean, I I mean no it's probably too Right. That I would have been an interesting photo of the sitter. Okay. Right. Uh, and given that Atlas doesn't remember any of that now, it's probably too late, but that might have been an interesting thing, you know, to create a lineup with different pictures. Yes. Different people. And right. should he then pick the baby uh, and actually react to right. that, that would have been individual, that picture? That, that would have been quite a test. Did he ever see a picture of his past mom or, or, uh, so how, um, so like the next day, cause I mean, I, this consumed my mind, like 
I couldn't stop and not like I was obsessed but I'm just like is did that happen I just I kept questioning is this really oh, you had to have been worried I'm very skeptical because I don't want to sound like a you know fake or someone who's seeking attention you know man what do I yeah. do with this information what do people do with their kids say stuff like this I don't know yeah um, so I mean I looked up the parents on Facebook and mm -hmm. so I said I want to do a test with Atlas just to make sure he's not I don't know I'm not crazy we're not crazy so I took a picture of the dad and mm -hmm. I just looked up Google search African-American men around that age and I just took a bunch of pictures and I made like a collage like on the computer you did and I said hey Atlas do you know any of these people over here and he's looked at it and he said oh my dad you that's my dad right there and he picked him right out of the picture. immediately wow said, that's my dad that's cool. uh -huh. and so did you do um, the same thing with his mom by chance i did the same thing with the mother it's my mom oh my gosh i miss her he wanted to see her he really wanted to meet her for several years um she was that's a whole another story she did not want to meet we did contact them they you do did mm -hmm. right Right, you had um, attempted to contact the family and they wanted nothing to do with this situation, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, right. the dad did talk to me. Um, we did communicate for a little bit, but I think a lot of people were telling him that I was some kind of fraud. Um, and he said he was so afraid mm -hmm. to accept it because what if it wasn't true? So and how the mom did... was the same way. She was afraid to accept this and it's not true then it would break their heart if i was like and i said okay if you're lying that, yeah. so you can always talk to me and if you need to i'll leave you alone i'm not gonna push it yeah i don't want to bother you and as yeah. a mom how did that make you feel knowing that your son really wanted to meet another mom like did was he associating you with his mom or was it a complete disassociation where you were like the person there but his mom wasn't here he basically would just we just referred to her as old mom as like it's and i always <laughs> find that, I saw that how many people have that in their household as we would just say oh my old mom old dad that that was his old parents that's how he referred to them and so how did it make you feel though as a mom it i mean it didn't hurt me it's okay no. i understand um I understand that it's this confusing for him and yeah. hard for him to talk about. Um, the only thing that ever upset me was that he really, really wanted to see her. Um, no. And he would get really upset after he saw the pictures and he um, wanted to meet her very badly. And he said he missed her and he wanted to see her again. And we ended up um, to fill, film the um, reenactment scenes. Yeah. We actually went to New York. Mm -hmm. to do that at the producer's house and stuff like that mm -hmm. me and him went there and they tried to contact them to meet okay. us yeah. and they did they it didn't they didn't happen and, so how, so I was how did it go from you hearing these stories from your son to somebody else asking you hey can you tell me again because i'd like to throw you on a tv show how did that work so um so yeah, I mean, I never meant to get on Netflix or anything. So after, um, I think I was talking about it with my mom and some family and they're like, you should tell messages. It took me a little bit before I messaged Jalen's parents because I was very afraid to upset them. I mean, I could imagine having my child being murdered and then some years later, someone's like, hey, my kid's talking about your kid. I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess I would want to know so I went back and forth should I talk to him or not yeah so um so I had a lot of family and friends talking to me about what I should do and so I just kind of looked up past life information mm -hmm. what you know other cases what did they do like what do you do if this happens and that's where I saw um the Dr. Jim Tucker mm -hmm. who um, I guess has some books mm -hmm. and he's the shows and he's like this expert Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this guy seems, it, I, mean, I mean, I don't think I could ever contact him, but I found his information at the University of Virginia uh -huh. and I just emailed them. I'm like, hey, you know, I see you did this stuff. I didn't, I have this story and I don't know who I was talking to about, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I emailed him. I think the next day he emailed me back. He asked my phone number 
And like, I think two days later we were talking on the phone and he, oh, was, he like, was interested. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He was interested. <laughs> so very... I was like, wow, I guess I oh. do have something interesting because he, yeah. Well, it's what he, it's what he specializes in as far mm -hmm. as the uh, children yeah. who have past live memories. Mm -hmm. wow. And, so... uh, I know he approaches it very skeptically, but yes. in the case of your son, he was truly impressed that yes. he felt he that as, as he much as he may have tried to come up with a conventional explanation, he could not. Yes. So, so did he, um, was he talking now, to your son at yeah. that point? What was that? Was he talking to your son at that point? Had you introduced him yet? So um, we no we they didn't talk like on the phone or thing. Oh, okay. And he just said, um, you know, I'll I'll fly out. I'm gonna fly out and see you there in Indiana. And I, I mean, I was like, oh my wow. gosh, come here to my house. You know, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. um, I don't live anywhere fancy, so <laughs> you know, Midwest. Yeah. Um, and then it got postponed for a little bit. And he said, actually, I just got asked by a documentary crew. If they could come with me when I interview you, because they're going to do a documentary. Is that okay? It's for Netflix. It'll probably come out in a couple of years. And I just remember almost feeling panicked, like, oh my gosh, like, like I'm just a normal, I'm a preschool teacher. Like, I'm just like a normal human. Like, this is very <laughs> bizarre for me to happen. And I just couldn't believe it was very surreal. The part of my son is talking about a past life. It's going to be documented. They people want to film it. I'm like, this is real like I got I mean I still think about it and it is very surreal to think about what did your son think about it it is so funny because he's just like eh, about the whole thing whatever he's Was never he okay? been that excited about it oh really no he just I guess so normal I guess he just doesn't I don't know he didn't phase him so how was he during like being interviewed and and what what was that process like for you and him well he was really shy at first and so it took a while they were at my house I think for seven hours wow <laughs> yes so um setting up and mm -hmm. you know my whole living room and yeah it was crazy and he was very shy and quiet and he was hiding behind me a lot and, mm -hmm. but we had talked beforehand about mm -hmm we're going to talk and they're going to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Just say what you need to, I didn't want to coach him. You know what I mean? I want it to be as, you know, just real as possible. Um, I didn't coach him with anything to say, just they ask you questions, just say what you remember. If you don't remember, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. and things he talked about in that interview with Dr. Tucker, he even surprised me because um, I had yes, shown him the father and mother photos before. Mm -hmm. um, I have never showed him photos of parks, which is what Dr. Tucker brought with him since uh -huh. Atlas talked about a playground uh -huh. and um, Atlas picked out a series of photos of the playground and which is across the street from where he lived and he uh -huh. recognized that playground. I actually never thought to even mm -hmm. look up house buildings, nothing like that. So yeah. I never even, and so he had buildings, apartment buildings in Brooklyn and Atlas picked out one that's my old house and then the babysitter's house. I mean, he picked out all the tests. He got all of them correct. And I was surprised because I didn't even know that he would know that. Yeah. Um, it's not like we have brownstone type buildings here. You yeah. know, like so it's not like they're not even familiar buildings. Like we don't yeah, have you stick of built buildings. that kind of thing, not brick buildings. And so it was you don't probably have type of structure here so it's just interesting that he pointed out oh yep that was my house I put it at that playground and I think I had goosebumps just <laughs> watching it like mm -hmm. it was filming it it was a live thing I was impressed that I think I couldn't believe that he was remembering wow. that. did any point in time did it so feel like your son was like a stranger at all like it it wasn't him I know it's a really weird question but <laughs> Like, just like he's having all of these other life experiences, like that kind of thing. Um, no, I mean, it's still my son Atlas, and it was just <laughs> his old life. And we talk about it like very nonchalant, you know. I'm very open, talk about with all my kids about everything. So awesome. Um, I didn't think, I just thought it was just Atlas, and he had this whole other life, and <laughs> apparently um, a short life, unfortunately. 
That is sad. Don, you had a question. Yeah, now the Netflix uh, program was based on uh, Leslie Keene's book. Yes. And she writes for the New York Times. She had a best-selling book on UFOs. Mm -hmm. Did you meet her at any time during the, uh, the interviews? Or have you been in contact with her? Did she make any suggestions? Or did she even share any other experiences that she's investigating? Because it's something that she's also been investigating. Right. Um, we only communicated yeah. briefly before the documentary. She did email me and we had emailed each other um, about the documentary, her interest in my case and some stuff she does, but nothing like she talked about, like, you know, she does a lot of UFO stuff and she was, mm. um, she sent me which a copy. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, which isn't germane, has nothing to do with your situation. So it seems that uh, it was a rather odd conversation that she would tell you about her UFO book, <laughs> as opposed to um, tell you some of the shared experiences that she's looked into that would uh, help you possibly, or both of you, understand right. what you're talking about here. Right. What your son was originally describing. If I may quickly just ask, um, not knowing as far as the Washington family and their religious background in all this. And is it possible that and you had mentioned that you did converse with the father? You did talk with him. Mm -hmm. It was the mother that wanted nothing to do with. Is it possible that maybe your mother believed it and she just didn't want to open up such a wound mm -hmm. that, say, she literally could talk to her own deceased son through your right. own son mm -hmm. and, and that it was just something that better not to even go there? Mm -hmm. I do feel that it that, could be a possible something for the mother the mother and father are not together um, yeah so okay. i had sent messages to the mother for a, like a month like a message or two but she never read them like it was unread i didn't know if she got on facebook often so then i switched to the dad and said something and then he contacted her and said hey someone's been trying to talk to you and uh -huh. so she did read them and then he was adamant about mm -hmm. he kept to like facetime with atlas but then he would back out and then we set it up and back out and he said that Galen's death took a lot of toll on them um he actually was in therapy like he saw a therapist and yeah. I think mm. he actually said he brought it up to his therapist and his therapist was telling him not to communicate with me <laughs> well so. for the loss of their son and, and by that manner and then the thing is you're the one that hires you're the one that brings in the babysitter so you actually wind up, I can't, uh, you, you blame yourself. Right. Just as much as the murderer, the perpetrator in, in the loss of their son. So I can't imagine and, and, and how it certainly, you know, would create such a, 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 a chasm between them that mm -hmm. uh, uh, without professional help. Let me just quick ask, did Dr. Uh, a Tucker attempt to contact the Washingtons at all. Yes. He had also attempted to contact them. I think it was the same scenario of they weren't interested. Mm -hmm. So that was about and they it. Couldn't and, so he, and the mother couldn't say that he was a, a, a nut or that he was somehow, you know, someone that she would rather not speak with. Right. Yeah. So I mean, he he's, a, being he's a doctor. Yeah. And I know they have seen the documentary. I, I do know that. I've mm -hmm. had... Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. They did watch it. They have watched wow. it, and they actually have a lawsuit against Netflix. Mm -hmm. I don't want to... I don't know a whole lot. That's okay, but... Wow. Yes. That's interesting, just because, like... Which is the reason, the reason they watched it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. But it's we can't control things like that. I mean, it's not like your son chose to have these random memories. And 
these things that we can't explain, even doctors and therapists that have been doing this for years to sit down with your son and just be baffled that he's remembering these things from another child's life that, I mean, it must've, they must've just been in complete awe. And I mean, I don't know how many times they have that happen, of course, but did, I, know. I sorry, go ahead. No, it, um, it was cause I'm really curious in your family or your family history, has there been any, a like past history of, of visions or, or dreams that have come true or like premonitions or, any other like past life thing or did you like look into that I'd have been really curious so um I come in from a extremely religious family okay that was my next question <laughs> yes I have had I've done other podcasts and you know other interviews mm -hmm. and some things and a lot of them um, are about religion and my religious and so I'm open I will talk about anything um mm -hmm. I grew up extremely re religious family like mm -hmm. my grandfather is a pastor my uncles are pastors like mm -hmm you know Whoa. um oh. <laughs> but I was always the one who was questioning everything not okay. that I didn't believe but I'm like but why is every as a child how come all these other countries have different religions how come mm -hmm. if ours is right how come they got they didn't hear about it yeah how do they have this religion if it was true then how did they come up with this one mm -hmm. so I kind of question it and I would get in trouble for questioning things as a child mm -hmm. and um I remember one time I was a kid I said when I die I want to come back as a dog <laughs> I don't know why I said it I don't even remember why I said it and I remember my mom telling me that does not happen don't say that <laughs> and oh, I was wow. like oh, okay. I don't know why I thought that happened but um so I have always had a um I guess questioning I, a mind that I question everything and I'm open to anything because I don't think anyone has the correct answer of anything. Uh -huh. um, I do believe in some type of higher power because especially because of Atlas, because yeah. how does this even work? I don't know. You know, something's happening where, yeah. you know, that's the case. If, if anyone having um, some type of vision stuff, it would be me. Okay. I, I don't know anyone else in my family, but I have had um, throughout my life dreams and then it happens or, I mean, I dreamt that someone's house caught on fire and the next day their house caught on fire and burned down. Like I've had a lot of different experiences in my life, mm -hmm. but nothing to where I thought, you know, maybe there's coincidental dreams or, you know, yeah. I haven't, I talked to a paranormal podcast once and they thought, they talked to me a lot about it and I actually never yeah. thought about it until talking about it with them that mm -hmm. like, Oh, wow, you must, you, you're very open-minded. So, you know, having this stuff, visions yeah. and stuff happening to you, maybe things happen to you because you can understand them. I don't know. You know? Yeah. So do you think that maybe that's so possibly passed that's down to your son? Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how any of it works. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't either. I'm, I don't, I'm not I don't know, but <laughs> somehow maybe he is very sensitive and so am I so that's he's awesome. a very sensitive kid what were you gonna say Don in being a in being a preschool teacher am I correct yes um do you have I mean I'm sure especially after the Netflix mm -hmm. program you became somewhat of a local celebrity so to speak is <laughs> that local. the case or do you have or do you have parents who are looking at you askew or even rather accusatory or I don't want you saying or, or, or yeah. speaking of this to my children are well, you getting any of that are you getting any flack I would never talk about it to my preschoolers because I don't want to upset any parents mm -hmm. because we also work at a right. religious preschool so it's a religious school mm -hmm. but m most the parents were okay like most of my co-workers thought it was very interesting mm -hmm. like most i would say 90 percent is positive mm -hmm. i assume the people that never spoke to me about it are the ones who didn't care for it and i'm assuming that's after the the netflix thing came out i'm your son wasn't like running around the preschool going hey i got a past life <laughs> he never really talked about it that much like it's interesting oh, wow. and i was worried that people would question him Mm -hmm. and um uh 
like my oldest son at the time right now he's 16 you know he was a little mm-hmm. bit older and he they're like tell us about this tell us about that atlas tell us about that and then he would be like just making things up and i would say no we're not oh. doing that we're not questioning him because they just want him to keep telling more stuff yeah keep telling more mm-hmm. information and mm-hmm. i would say no we're not going to do that because that's how he will make up a scenario that way um but going back to the year that came out i definitely had parents really um they were into it apparently that morning on the radio they were talking about our local radio show was like we have someone in evansville on netflix and one of my parents called her name is erica aubrey she's my son's preschool teacher <laughs> and oh that was gave great her, gave them my information <laughs> and then they called me and i was on the radio show the next one <laughs> so. did did you uh and this isn't to sound like vain or anything but did you like that that your son was recognized for something that was so unique. Did it make you feel good or did it make you a little bit scared that you had like these new eyes on you that might question I would, you? I would say scared. Um, yeah. Because if I saw that, maybe I would think that lady is a kook you know, <laughs> because I am like that. Do okay. people now see me as some weird, crazy lady? Um, they do? I don't know. I just was oh. too concerned that they might. Um, oh, I might. Okay. Oh, God. I. I mean, I still have people saying, "Well, how do you know he didn't just make that up?" And I don't even want to like. I don't even want to make that argument anymore. It's been so yeah. many times. I don't do that because I'm not going to argue with. So anybody. you put your shields up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not arguing with anybody. So I just say, you know, I'm not arguing because, you know, I don't. I don't want to get back and forth this battle. I know my child. I know how he answered the questions. I work with children. I actually have lots of training. I'm talking with children like um, from abusive situations. And so that's how I use those techniques mm-hmm. to talk to Atlas. Yeah. That way I wasn't um, putting words in his mouth, you know, using open-ended questions. That's exactly how we talk to children and we're trained to talk to children if we suspect any type of child abuse. Yeah. You know, we don't put words. So, I mean, I feel like he came up with those names himself. Yeah. And I I try to tell a lot of people. Uh, so, I'll say the next day after the, the day the uh, Netflix thing came out. Yeah. I mean, I had hundreds of Facebook friend requests. Oh, geez. <laughs> so, I mean, I've heard it all. Oh, man. So, I had created a Facebook <laughs> group just for Atlas's story because i had so much wow no doubt no doubt did dr tucker offer any uh answers as to why the the imagery the uh flashbacks the memories of the past life seem to cut off is that something common that he's experienced with other children or does he feel he, there's there's a there's a causation for that? Well, I'll tell you both how they started. He gave me an explanation how it started and how it stops. Mm-hmm. Um, he said that Atlas being in our car, it was a cloudy day and we're on the highway. And he was mm-hmm. staring out the window. And then he used to start talking about it. He may have been hypnotized by the highway. Um mm-hmm. uh-huh. Because oh, he was okay. very relaxed. It was kind of raining. Uh-huh. He was staring out the window. I mean, it was we just had a big meal. And they he said that's when most children taking baths, riding in the car, when they're very relaxed, you know, he may have got hypnotized somehow and the memories came in. Self hypnosis. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh? yeah. Like self hypnosis. In other words, yes. you like place yourself almost like day daydreaming. Right. Yeah. Yes. And then he said, he said that every child he has ever really worked with always loses the memories. They always do. Really? Mm. Does it say like a a time span or no? As they get older, they forget more and more. They know the most when they're the youngest, but they can't really communicate it. And usually by the time they start talking, they've already forgotten. You know, if, you know, if, if there was a past life thing, if everyone was reincarnated, yeah. So, um, and these are just personal ideas. And I think, you know, um, 
the more tragic maybe they are, the more you're able to remember them. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. It seems a lot of, um, if you look up a lot of reincarnation, you know, stories, mm -hmm. usually the person has died in a way that it was like sudden or too soon. It seems like maybe they need to relive their second life. I, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it was closure. M maybe was he really closure did because... want to know that his mom yeah. did kill him. Yes. That was another thing. I thought of many reasons of why this happens happened yeah. or what was the purpose. Maybe that was the only purpose because he was extremely relieved was. to know about that. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Oh now, God. Dr. Tucker, for having uh, described that with the children he's working, it seems to happen with all of them. There's a cutoff, a closure, as Ellie just called it, where mm -hmm. they lose all previous memory contact with that past mm -hmm. then i would i would take it that he would tend to be skeptical on adults who then explore past life regression where all of a sudden just through hypnosis they're able to remember 50 years 50, uh, 100 years 200 years before so has that ever come up with him has he or anyone suggested regression hypnosis in an attempt to retrieve any more information or does he feel that there is this cutoff um i never talked to him about regret like doing the hypnosis regression as adults or older child right so i have not talked to him about that but it is interesting um that some adults remember and i'm also skeptical about it as well um yeah. I don't know. I'm sure they could be true. more skeptical of an adult. I mean, ch children are, are are very forthright. They just don't make things up. They don't hallucinate and describe things right. that aren't affecting them emotionally. Yeah. Because that's the one thing that they rely on: fear mm -hmm. and happiness right. and sadness. They're, they're not putting on airs. They have nobody to, you know. They don't have anybody to impress. Whereas the house, 100%. Yes. There's right. no the reason for them to lie. Your motives. Right. Right. Yeah. Or I will say I've been added to a Facebook group for past life memories. And I was, I, you know, I was just reading stuff. And half the people on there, I'm like, these people are weird <laughs> and they're lying. <laughs> and so then if I'm on this group, I look like one of these weird liars. And so I, don't... I would have left. <laughs> yes. Because they're like, well, I used to be Elvis. I used to be on the Titanic and I, yeah, I I'm on my fourth life. And I'm like, Oh, come on, stop it. I just had to get away from it because you make me look I'm... like I am. Never grown up, you know? Yes. You guys are just wanting the attention. So those type of people make people who have real experiences i think well, it makes like, it it seems doubtful yeah it so makes people, them look like a fraud yes a mm -hmm. lot of people have as asked, we're you know as okay. we're winding as we're winding down and we're getting to the end of the, yeah. of the, the, the program um were there any scars were there any marks on atlas because i know that also has been a consideration that that and at times babies are born with marks that then suggest some previous injury, something that happened prior to their even being conceived, that type of thing. So mm -hmm. were there any was there anything uh, physiological on Atlas that also was a little curious? Um, he has no birthmarks. No. Okay. Um, I will okay. say he was born, he was my only one that had, um, uh, he had to be checked out one of my pregnancies. He had to be monitored a lot. Um, and he had wrapped his cord around his throat many times and in mm. knots and he was suffocating himself and I had to be induced and he would have died another day if he was still in there. Oh, I don't know man. if he had anything because he was suffocated, mm -hmm. hating himself. Um, that right, was pretty right. much the only, you know, interesting thing, I guess. Wow. But um, that now, is it sounds like this is all, all, past, all, past, 
all past him and that uh, at least you don't have to be concerned with it. Would, 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 you, would you consider Atlas, is he a gifted child in any way? Is he different? I mean, um, is he peculiar uh, in his tastes, in, uh, uh, you know, just his approach to life? I mean, granted, he's only nine years old, but I mean, are you seeing anything that uh, you're going, hmm, he's going to grow up to be uh, <laughs> some... Uh, type of man at some point <laughs> it's hard to tell like i said he has always been very sensitive um so he does get his feelings hurt really easily um oh. so i mean he is very you know i can't explain it like he is concerned if he doesn't read very well because he's dyslexic and they've just he's been diagnosed with that oh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he so seems very he, empathetic he is very worried about not reading like the others and you know, so he has a lot of sympathy and emotions he um when he was three years old he would watch even a show with someone getting lost in the woods and he would just tear up and oh and, like I, we were watching this like a show like a documentary type show and he would just have tears saying he was upset for that person because they're sounds lost like a, in a cartoon and I, fine I young like, boy though sounds like a fine young boy have you kept the diary a log through those years i mean any thing that was said or that you observed did you make note of it did you record or film anything or i did not i <laughs> probably should have because i didn't realize how interesting they were mm -hmm. um, but i have most everything in my head <laughs> like i remember you go. pretty good just right. like the right. infatuating with african-american women and things like i you know i remember all that stuff and it clicked later you know well maybe that was why you know yeah maybe it really was you should maybe write it down for him give it to him when he's older and say hey kiddo do you remember this you <laughs> right. remember this right <laughs> erica your story I mean, just quickly. is phenomenal yeah. I, like i Absolutely. i can't even believe it it is to experience that must have been just a complete whirlwind. And we do have to wrap things up, but is there anything else that you would like to leave us with this evening? Oh, um, I guess I would say that people should listen to their children. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, yes, listen yes. To them and when Great they're advice. talking, my favorite quote is listen to the children because yeah. I get a lot of insight with my own children and preschoolers if you listen to them they're honest um like you said they have no one to impress impress um, right listen to your children i have heard children saying all kinds of things you know at school that i find interesting could be for another day um wow but you know if i wasn't listening to my child talking i could have ignored him i asked him you know so questions you know what's going on and so i would think if any advice listen to your child parents should listen to their children more often and pay attention and see what's going on sound advice sound advice for all of us you've been a wonderful guest erica awesome yes thank you so so much for being our guest this evening it's been fabulous yeah um, i hope that you have a great rest of your evening as well all right thank and you. say hi to atlas for us please yes thank you I will let him know. I told him that I'm doing a podcast for your Netflix documentary. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just he doesn't care. Okay, yeah. I don't know anything you're talking about. Whatever. So. <laughs> he knows I do these sometimes. Stay and well. People talk to him at teachers at school and stuff. They all know him at school. And he just just doesn't even phase him. <laughs> well, definitely say hi to him for us. But okay. And thank you again. Thank you again. Yes, thank no problem. You again. All right, everybody, that's all that we have for this evening. We really hope that you enjoyed this podcast. And please don't forget to rate and review it. It really helps other people find us. If you are looking to connect with the podcast, you can find us on Facebook at No Earthly Explanation. And if you'd like to connect with Don, you can find him on Facebook at Donald Raymond Schmidt. And if you'd like to find me, you can find me on all social media platforms at Ellie Ringo and at Ellie Knows Rocks. And if you have any comments or questions about this episode or future episodes you'd like us to investigate, please don't hesitate to email us at noearthlyexplanation at gmail.com. Thank you so much and have a great evening.
Good night, all. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Metacortex Publishing hopes that you've enjoyed this presentation. Please take a moment to listen to some other podcast offerings from Metacortex Publishing. A quest is a search for something. And every week, the Quest podcast will show you how we know what we know through interviews with people that have incredible stories of dedication and perseverance. I'm your host, Todd Fisher. Join me in this thought-provoking and inspiring podcast of discovery. Find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Cult Following is a podcast that studies the personalities and common traits of cult leaders and their followers. Get the real story behind these infamous and oftentimes tragic cults from a new perspective, through exhaustive research, and from interviews with people that were there. Available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to rate and review this episode. This podcast is produced by Todd Fisher and Anthony Smith and is distributed by Metacortex Publishing. This podcast is copyright. Any previously trademarked or copyright content is used by permission. Information and opinions stated in this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Please be sure to visit the official website for Metacortex Publishing at metacortexpublishing.com or find us on social media for other unique content.